Apparently, with a tactic called Bombo La A, Bombo La O, you'll be dancing to the effing kings when you're done. Let's check it out. This is the Bombo La A, Bombo La O tactic. Again, another one with the name. I had to try it, see what it was like. According to the Steam Workshop, it says it works great with the winner update. Press, tackle, dominate possession, incredible amount of shots on goal, defensively very solid. We will see in just a minute if that's actually true or not. But you'll be dancing to the effing kings when you are done. Don't know what that means. But let's check out the tactic first, then we'll get into the table. As you can see, it is a sweeper keeper in defend. Wing backs on the left and the right in support. Central defender on the left and defend. Ball playing defender on the right. DM and defend. A deep lying playmaker in support and a box to box in support. Two inside forwards on attack. And then an ad advanced forward on attack centrally. It is a positive mentality, custom tactical style in possession. Attacking with its fairly wide. Approach play, pass into space. Play out of defense. Slightly shorter passing directness. Tempo is slightly higher. Low crosses. Run at defense and be more expressive. In transition, counter press, counter, distribute to the fullbacks and center backs, and then out of possession, high press line of engagement, higher defensive line, prevent short goalkeeper distributions, and trigger press much more often. Now, how to do with our three teams? As you can see, it was okay, actually. Tottenham come in fifth in the uh, Europa League spots, Wolves in seventh with Conference League, and then Newcastle in ninth. 59 points, eh, 62 points, eh. 71 points is not bad for Tottenham, though. Uh, Manchester United, though, running away with it. 91 points. Liverpool and Man City, sort of-ish close behind, but not enough. Uh, but overall, so far, the tactic has done a pretty good job. Tottenham started off the league not very well. I mean, they started off with a fantastic win against Everton, but then three losses in a row, uh, followed by a nice sea of green and yellow, and then just spotty from there on out for the first half of the season. They do make it into the Champions League round of 16. Uh, but as you can see, they lose out in the EFL Cup third round to Hull City. They are moving in uh, to the FA Cup fourth round. Like I said, Champions League fifth round of the FA Cup. They lose out in the quarters to Leeds United nil two in the quarterfinals of the Champions, I mean the FA Cup. And they do lose out in the Champions League having drawn the first one against PSG and then losing away from home one to three. Uh, and then actually finishing out the season, not too bad. Only two losses, uh, but a couple of these draws would have been nice to turn into, you know, three-point games. So Wolves schedule not doing all that well. I mean, you do have two fantastic wins, Crystal Palace and Manchester United, but an Everton win in the EFL Cup second round, but loss to Liverpool, Arsenal, a smashing by Newcastle. Uh, and then Aston Villa. You do have a nice run here with only a single loss to Southampton. So not too bad. You do lose out in the EFL Cup fourth round. Two all to Liverpool on penalties, though. Uh, a fantastic run here. FA Cup fourth round replay against Newcastle. You're finally, getting, you know, I guess, pipping one back on them. Uh, but lose out to Leeds United in 1-2 to FA Cup fifth round. And fairly spotty up until the full of match. And then just points abound, you know, for the rest of the season. You do win Liverpool 2-0 at home. Newcastle not having a bad start, a bad August. You do lose out to Liverpool. It's first, uh, you lose out to Leeds United. What is with Leeds? Uh, two to three, but seven to one over the Wolves. There you go. You do have a nice, somewhat nice August, a bad September, an okay October, two losses in there, one to five, Brighton one to two. Uh, you lose out in the EFL Cup third round, nil two to Manchester City. Yeah, I'm not surprised. FA Cup fourth round replay, four to five in extra time against Wolves. Uh, and, I mean, it is spotty up until pretty much Nottingham Forest or Bournemouth. Uh, Man City in there, but still a good amount of green, I will say that. Tottenham's transfers. You have Vilmer Barrios from Zenit, 12.75. Oscar Aranda from Real Madrid, 245k. He's a youngster, I'm guessing. Roger Abanez from Capitaline, which is Roma, at 43 million. Made some interesting moves there. Uh, and then a couple of outs, as we've seen before. Wolves not doing a whole lot. Miguel Veloso from Hellas Verona, 325K. And then same outs. Newcastle, you do have uh, Guido Rodriguez, Facundo Farias, Ruben Loftacheek, Ronnie Edwards from Petersburg. We've seen Tony Weston, Kai Kennedy. We've seen most of those. Kieran Drewsbury Hall from Leicester on loan and Nahuel Molina from Atletico on loan. So 
a couple of new faces that we haven't seen before. Uh, anyone out alone? Mark Gillespie, that's about it. Squad-wise, don't forget to pause it where you want to see your players. Uh, ton of, I mean, they've got some green, but nothing too amazing. 740 for Frazier for Forster and 715 for Christian Romero. Ooh. Wolves, about the same. 729, oh, Geddes isn't even there. 715, Huang Hee Chan, uh, 70712. So, you know, we've got a couple. Newcastle, not too bad. Uh, Dubrovka, only three appearances. 720, though. Uh, 714 for Drewsbury Hall, 707 on Marone, 715 Alexander Isaac, meh, about average. Tottenham's data hub-wise, they are good in both defense and attack. They're a good threat overall and strong defensively. As you can see, attacking-wise, very good, at least on average, if not better on most occasions. Uh, clearances per game, blocks per game, not doing all that well. Everything else, again, on average or a little bit above. Wolves are quite decent defensively and very good in attack. As you can see, attack is very good. Fouls per game or against per game is just under. Uh, defensively, you've got the fouls made per game. You've got the clearances per game and the interceptions per game. Well, tackling percentage as well. Um, nope. And XGA. So there are a couple of things that are on or below. Uh, they're okay, I would say. And then Newcastle, quite decent defensively and very good in attack. As you see, the attack is very well done. Uh, a lot of numbers higher than the Premier League average, some lower, some just bang on. And then defending better than Wolves were, but a lot of numbers bang on average. Uh, fouls per game, not great. Interceptions per game is higher, which is nice to see. But again, blocks and clearance is not there. So most goals, Manchester United, but Newcastle, Tottenham, and Wolves all in there. 69, 67, and 66 apiece. Fewer shots, you got Tottenham and Newcastle. Most possession, nobody. Dribbles, Newcastle, and Wolves. Uh, fewest conceded, you do have Tottenham with 41, which is nice to see. Shutouts with Tottenham at 16. Nobody for most tackles. Best cast completion, not even a single soul. And then Newcastle Wolves, Tottenham, most shots for at 638 down to 561. That is quite the disparity. And then most points per game, you can see Newcastle and Wolves up there, as you would expect. Cunha with Wolves tied for second with 22 with Rashford. Uh, you got Isaac with 16. Most assists, you got Sarabia and Trippier both up there at 14. Player of the match awards, absolutely no one. Coutinho there with seven. Not a bad haul there. Pass completion, dribbles made. You got Almarone and Semedo, which is nice to see someone in the list. But few is conceded. Hugo Lloris comes in at most, with most shutouts and tied for third. Uh, no one for most tackles. Trippier, Sarabia, and Porro with uh, most key passes, as you would expect. They're usually up in that list. Most shots, Cunha, Almarone, Isaac, and St. Maximin. Overall, Tottenham, Harry Kane with 19 goals. That is an awful number for him. I mean, it's not too low from what we've seen. Usually it's in the 20s. Occasionally it's been 30-something. But Danjuma with 702 highest average rating. Most assist Danjuma and Porro with 8 apiece. And then most player of the match awards, Harry Kane with 7. Cunha with 24 goals. Higher than his probably average. Uh, but on the Wolves team, you know, what do you expect? But doing very well. Cunha was 712, highest average rating. Most assists with Sarabi was 17. And then Neto and Sarabi with four player of the match awards each. Eh, not too bad. Isaac with 21 goals for Newcastle. Probably low uh, for him. He's kind of, it's kind of on the average side, but still a little low. 715, highest average rating. Trippier with 16 assists. And then Isaac with six, six player of the match awards. Again, pretty much bang on average. But overall, I mean, I will say this is something to look at. If you're looking at that 4-3-3 type of tactic, uh, it has done fairly well for these teams. You know, two of them coming into Euro European spots. Newcastle missing out by not too much. I mean, by three points, a single goal or a single win in there. Nice green. If you took over these, definitely, I think you if you're good at the game or if you have some luck at the game, you could definitely pick up all three of these teams into higher spots. But... That is it for me, Savvy FM for the Football Manager Blog channel saying thank you as always for watching. Take care and enjoy.